trauma. Everyone has it. No one talks about it. It seems easier to stay silent, ignore it, or stuff it than it does to honor it, learn from it, and finally heal. Trauma is debilitating, yet so often we suffer in silence. Trauma is not meant to be battled alone. And we are no longer going to suffer in silence. Together, we are creating a safe place to speak, to share our stories and grow our strength as we heal. Together, we are giving a voice to those who have been silenced, bringing darkness into light and letting God use our stories. Today, we find ourselves again. We relight our spark and let it light up the world. Stop SIS is a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating on issues of trauma and trafficking, as well as the amazing power of the healing journey. Welcome to Stop SIS. Hey, 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 you guys, big welcome back to Stop SIS, Stop Suffering in Silence. You are seeing us live after a four mile hike <laughs> at the Dream Life Adventure, the first uh, survivor cohort that Stapsis is putting together. And we are having an amazing time so far. We wanted to bring you in on the excitement. So my name is Denise Walsh. I have my partner in crime, Ms. Rachel Timothy. Um, and we've got Melissa. She has been a participant in 90 Day U-Turn over the past three months and said yes to coming to the adventure as well. Welcome, Melissa. Yes, thank you. Um, there was a bit of a hectic experience to get here, but I'm glad that I finally actually made it here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Melissa came all the way from Vegas, and so it wasn't a quick or easy trip, but she <laughs> she made it. She made it. And I definitely, I can't wait. Well, we've only been here a day and a half, so we'll continue to give you updates as to the transformations. But um, first, let's talk about 90 Day U-Turn as a whole. Why did you say yes? How did you find out about it? And right, so we were actually talking about that before. I figured it out. I actually texted you. Okay. So what happened was I randomly found you on Facebook, but I had already been signed up for your texts. Yeah. So I was getting alerts somehow, but I randomly was on Facebook, saw that you had the self-sabotage, the free workshop for yep. that, watched it, and then you mentioned the 90-day U-turn with the survivors, and I was already signed up for your text alerts, so I uh, texted you, um, I, I watched your live, I heard something about survivor thing, and how do I get into that, and yeah, that was pretty much it. Well, what I love about your story is that you didn't, you knew of me, but you didn't know me. We had never right. communicated before. <laughs> you didn't know Rachel or her story. Right. You just heard, you heard what was happening and you immediately went, that's me. Yeah. yeah I'm I, in. I heard survivor and I thought, um, I need to be around people like that. So yeah, because I didn't have any, anybody really. I had, like, I know a couple people, but not anybody that was like doing a program for survivors. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that would be really powerful yeah. to do it with people that knew what I felt. Yeah. 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 Because there's something powerful about just having this common foundation, this common understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember being really excited to be here. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, she told I think you told me about her. Yeah. But no, I, and that was, that was why I joined though, was just the community and just, cause I, I tried other classes and they worked, but I'd never tried one where it was with survivors. And I was like, well, I think that's going to be like a whole other experience. Yeah. And what I think is so cool is that you didn't just say, I think I would like to do that. You, <laughs> you messaged me. You said, I heard what you said, which I said in passing, you guys. This wasn't even like a opportunity call for the survivor cohort. This was me right. doing a webinar and saying, by the way. And yeah, so it was she, really quick. It was. Yeah. And you caught it. And then you messaged me, which I think takes tremendous bravery. Absolutely. I was, and I will admit this too. It took me a little bit to message you. I actually sat on it for a little bit. I was like, I don't know. That's even more brave. Yeah, um, because I'd never talked to you. And like I told you, I, you know, I'd done one of your classes, yeah. one of our friends. But 
I, yeah, I, I was like, dude, should I do this? Like, I don't know. And then I just, I just, I just, then, yeah, like that five, four, three, two, the guy just did it. And I get the message and I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that's half the battle. It's yeah. just saying yes to the program. Right. And you did that all on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty proud of myself for that. And then be. I was, then I was scared because you wanted to call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, so I was um, I was nervous about the phone call because I knew you were going to be like, so you can do it. And mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I wasn't fully sure that I was going to say yes. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. Right, right, and yeah. I think that's the thing is when you it it can um, we can know we need something, but then the question is how does this fit into our life? Mm-hmm. How are we going to finagle this? What are the you know? And so right. on our phone call, we talked a bit about. The content we talked a bit about the timing the group how it works and structures and right. why having a cohort with this type of foundation is really powerful and uh and you did say it. yes i did <laughs> well and it's tricky for a survivor too because you've been tricked so many times. exactly and so um, you're trusting people you don't know yeah with your heart right and that's hard being vulnerable yes yeah yeah it's a very good point so tell us your favorite parts about 90 Day U-Turn. Oh um, I think we talked about this, actually. Um, I think my favorite part was one of the exercises that we did. Do you care if I share? Like, oh, yeah, talk about all, okay. So it was one of the exercises we did where we talked about um, TV shows and things that oh, had an impact. Yeah. And I guess for me... I, I didn't really fully <laughs> understand how much of an impact that TV shows yeah. and things that I was watching as a kid. And so then I started thinking like we were watching the Simpsons married with children. My mom would sit me in front of talk shows <laughs> crying out loud. Um, she would just, it, my, my TV was my babysitter most of the time. And so I figured out from that little exercise where a lot of my ideas around relationships were, because then I started thinking about, you know, the yeah. Simpsons, married with children, yeah. my, you know, and yeah, I was getting that at home, seeing my parents, but also right that television set, you know, yeah. and, and learning how relationships worked. And then I was thinking, and then the wheels start turning and thinking about my relationships and and then I started thinking about other members of my family and how things were just, things were just mirroring and how everything just fell apart. And that was when I decided to end my relationship. Because then I realized, I realized I had cast him into a role and I was replaying an event. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that just, everything. that's a big life change. That's a big life change. Yeah. yeah. So that was my favorite part. And that was week two. I don't know if you should say favorite. <laughs> should you say favorite? <laughs> yes, because it took you a step forward in your healing. Right. And confidence right. and all of it. Yeah, it was hard. But yeah. I, yeah. Week but two we is all about right. so overcoming self-sabotage. That's self-sabotage week. It's a 90-minute training. And what we do during 90-day U-turn is you get the training that you can listen to at any time in your own schedule. And you can write down exercises. You get a principal PDF, so you can write it all down and you do it on your own time. And then we meet once a week to talk about it. Uh, There's power in listening. But the reality is, right, if we could watch YouTube videos and be changed, we'd all be living our dream life. But there's power in writing it, and then there's power in speaking it and getting feedback from others. So that's where the community comes in, because you're not just coming into a group to listen and, like, be passive. You are actually getting to know people and connecting on a level that's not typical right online really yeah because I'm like you said you could watch so many youtube videos but like it's different when you because then you've got the interaction and right. discussion and different perspectives and maybe some things you didn't think about and accountability and accountability yes yeah for sure yeah people get so much um i want to say done i don't know if done is the right word but like they follow through Right. With that accountability. Yeah. Because I can remember the assignments and, and everything and then, um, you know, trying to get those done before we would do our Zoom. And yeah. I'm not going to do mine. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like it's because you know that, some, you know, it's it's due and it's everyone is doing that together. And I think that was really cool that we did some of them together, too. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
And so you, over the course of the 90 days, you did break up with your significant other. Mm -hmm. You started a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You started a YouTube channel. Tell us a bit about the content you're posting now and how that shifted the, um, your YouTube, your podcast, all of it. Yeah. So this one was the inspiration for that, actually, because you guys had said you were starting a podcast. Um, and I had already known about her book. So I had started working on the book and then I, my book, um, and then I decided once you guys announced that you were doing the podcast, I was like, I'd always wanted to do a podcast, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I watched so many of them. It's kind of an obsession. And um, I would researched it and everything, but um, her being so brave to just talk about her story and everything. I thought I didn't know if mine would be significant enough. I did that little comparison game. And then I was like, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so mine is basically sharing my story of my childhood trauma um, and domestic violence experience, as well as everything else pretty much in between that. And, your healing journey. and my healing journey. Yeah. And what is it called? It's called Divinely Healed. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> so you listened to it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So what would you say, like, how is life different now? I mean, it's really only been three, three and a half months since you started. It's, yeah, it's how crazy. How is life different? Um, it's, you know, it's still changing. Things are still changing for me, but I've noticed how I'm stronger than before. Four, um, and do things a little quicker than I did before mm -hmm. too. And I noticed I bounced back a little bit quicker too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I, I noticed this actually, uh, during my flight, I still got anxiety, but I wasn't sitting there before takeoff rocking and doing this because I'm, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> <That's funny. Yeah. laughs> um, and so I, I noticed that I, I was able, I was able to like, calm myself and center yeah and I do other you know other things for that too I do meditation and um mindfulness I try to practice mindfulness it's really hard to do for um survivors of trauma but it's helpful um but I did that and I was uh we landed and I was like wow <laughs> it wasn't as bad yeah and but yeah outside of that it's just um finally having direction in my life um, I never thought that I would start a podcast or even be writing a book. Those are two things that I I thought about doing, but I you just kind of oh no, you know other people do that, and yeah. So it's I just I still can't believe that I have a podcast. Well, so <laughs> you had people reaching out to you who uh, yeah yeah. I um, mean, it's not for my content though. Yours, I've been sharing stuff about you guys, but you're able to be there. Yeah, and right, them. and that was That's huge. That was crazy. Um, the the reach outs are crazy. Yeah. So, well, yeah. again, it's that building of community when, and that's why this podcast is called "Stop Suffering in Silence" because so many of us are only in our own head, mm -hmm. and we are there's no community for us to talk about some of the hard stuff mm -hmm. and the beauty that comes when we walk through that dark tunnel. Yeah, and I think like sharing my story of what I realized when the girl reached out, one of the girls reached out to me and sharing stuff about what you were doing. And I had another girl, it was crazy. They were just coming from everywhere. But what I realized was like, if I hadn't done this, like none of that would have happened. And that there's really not a lot of space out there for this specific topic. We're talking about like what you guys talk about with human trafficking and then trauma, abuse, the things that people don't necessarily people really don't know the things that are actually happening or they just don't want to see them. They'd rather bury their heads in the sand and just, nope, that doesn't exist. Um, so I think create we're creating a space yeah. where victims can come out and share their story or maybe just feel brave enough to do something maybe yeah. with their life. Yeah, well, I love that you said direction. Yeah. Because it's like when you are cloudy, and we call it clearing the cobwebs, um, where it just you don't even know what you want. You're spinning your wheels. Yes. You take one step forward, two steps back, and it can feel like 
All I know is I don't want to be here, but I don't really even know what I want or how to make a change. Yeah. And over the last 90 days, you have broken up with your significant other, you've applied for jobs, you have interviews, you're getting a job next week, we're claiming it. Yes. And, yes. <laughs> and you are starting to make powerful decisions mm -hmm. in a direction that you're excited about, which right. I think is priceless. And, you know, too, like with my situation, because I, I still live with my ex. So and that relationship was completely toxic. And so having this class, that support system to help you walk through that, but also to know that if you're having a bad day, that there's someone that you can talk to and reach out to, that is priceless yeah. because it is so, it's one thing to like leave a relationship. It's completely another thing when you have to leave that relationship and continue to live with that person and they're toxic on top of that. So yeah, I'm, this class was, we kept you saying way more yeah, <laughs> than you. Yeah. But you're right. Like having that consistency every week where you know that you'll have a place to talk, a place to share, a place to get feedback and be supported. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. We have people that come back to 90 day U-turn um, to number one, shed new layers um, to maybe focus on a different dream life goal, but really because they love each other. Yeah. And they yeah. want to still stay connected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I remember the last day we were like, so what do we do now? <laughs> we're not going to talk going. to each other anymore, you know? Yeah, but no, we, we've all stayed in contact. And um, I think it's really cool that <laughs> we have stayed in contact because I really thought that, oh, okay, this is it, you know, because I'm used to that. Right. Used to people like, okay, bye, <laughs> you know? And that's fine because I'm used to that. But the amount of support and stuff like getting like this trip was so, so difficult to plan. And I got stuck at the airport and then, you know, you guys were, the girls were all sending me money and help trying to help me get my ticket to begin with. And then I <laughs> messed it up and they're still giving like that support. I'm still there. And yeah, it was, it blew my mind. So what's cool is that um, as we do another round of 90 Day U-Turn, a lot of the graduates who are inviting new people, and of course, new people are kind of come in the next round, they're all invited back to be a part of it um, because we're not done. You know, we yeah. this is a pivot yeah. point. Yeah. It's a pivot point where we're making mm -hmm. a shift, and we know that even a 3% shift or a 10% shift is taking you in a new direction, mm -hmm. but we want to put gas on the fire. Right. Well, and what I've always said, and you've heard me say this, is it's it's not about the destination, it's the journey. It's about who you become along the way. And that's what 90 Day U Turn is. Oh, yeah. Love that. yeah. So what would you say to somebody who's out there who is hearing this maybe for the first time and they're like, that's me. I need to do that. Just do it. Do it scared. Because, and that's the, <laughs> one of the things that actually someone said during the thing was, um, you know, I don't know, like you do your podcast, like and you're scared, but you do it. Um, or you're not scared is what they said, I think. And <laughs> I think it was that like, you're not scared, but I am, I'm scared every time I hit record. Um, but I do it anyways. And so, and he, that is the same thing with this class. Like I, I was terrified even through the weeks that we were doing it, but you do it anyways, because otherwise for things to change, you have to do something different. Otherwise, things are just going to stay the same. So I would just ask you, do you want do you want to change? Yeah. Or do you want to stay the same? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, thank you for saying yes. <laughs> Three months ago. Thank, 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 thank you for calling me. <laughs> I am so, so glad. Me too. And um, we've got um, a few others that want to say hi and share a bit of their story. So I'm going to pause this and we'll bring them up. Of course. All right, welcome back. We magically have a new friend. <laughs> I just appeared to snap her fingers, and here I am. All right, this is Sarah. She's also somebody that we really didn't know. You didn't know either of us. No, ma'am. Before you reached out, and um, I'd love to hear, first of all, why you said yes and decided to join <sighs> the program. Okay, well... I said yes, basically because it was recommended to me um, by someone I had just reached out to. I don't, you know, I read her book and I reached out to her and um, we began speaking um, a lot and she eventually told me about the program and then she told me about Rachel and um, just things started, you know, connecting and um, I was at first really like nervous about it. And I was like, I don't know, these people, it might be just some strange, you know, ladies or whatever. But um, then she offered to pay a good chunk of the course. And 
that was like, wow, because somebody who I virtually, you know, not a stranger, but we've never physically met in person. Um, she believed in me that much. And she believed in y'all's, you know, program so much that she was like, here, here's X amount of money. Um, I want you to do this. And I was like, wow, okay, this is total God thing. The way I found, um, her name's Hannah, how I, how I found Hannah, how Hannah led me to you, how you both told me about this, how it led me to you, you know, it was all just dominoes that I never saw coming. So it was, it's awesome. So what was life like before you got started? Why were you at a place like where you were like, okay, I need this. I'm ready for something new, you know? Yeah. Um, just like an overwhelmingness of being stuck, um, of being like feeling like I had ideas and thoughts and passions and um, things, but having like this 10 million pound brick on my chest of not being able to actually do anything about these things, knowing that there was changes I needed to do in my personal life, in my relationship. Um, and knowing that I am somebody who uh, doesn't generally have um, a lot of people to cohort with. Um, and I thought, gosh, that might be really interesting. Yeah. And you so, had done a lot of trauma work. Yes. So yes. this was more about life after trauma. Yes. This was mostly life after trauma. It was mostly like Denise says, how what's your sparkle? Mm -hmm. and um, figuring what that was and really trying to work it out during these three months and make positive steps towards it. What was your favorite part of the program? Favorite part um, is definitely like towards the end of really feeling like you got like a knowledge about all of the, the, the ladies and like connecting and um, feeling like, oh, it's Thursday, yay, you know, because there was some Thursdays and I was like, oh God, it's Thursday. I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's that, like um, Melissa said, a bit of that accountability push to actually do the, the work, which is hard. Um, but in that work too, like feeling proud of myself that I pushed through some of the stuff that I did not want to do. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to slop off. Mm -hmm. But like, that's when I learned the most mm -hmm. is by doing things that were hard, mm -hmm. you know, when you pushed per se or, you know, um, so that was like, that's like a very part of realizing that I really, um, learned, yeah. um, through things that seemed hard. Um, so definitely, you know, ladies and then, and that, and then doing this retreat, you know, duh, you know, <laughs> being out in the Tennessee mountains, I'm from Minnesota, so there's nothing fun there. She it was is, like, what are, what's that noise? I said, that's cicadas. What? It's a creepy noise outside at night. And I'm like, they something sounds like it's gonna kill someone. And she's like, that's a cicada. I'm like, what? We, no, I'm from Michigan. We had to Google it. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know what a cicada is at all. Um and I wanted to see one, but I guess they're no, not you know. that visible. <laughs> but I want to know what's making that horrible noise. But anyway, um just being out here is like amazing and just getting away from normal home done life and like even today, the um, the hike was physically grueling, um, but but you did it. I did it, and I pushed. Like you know, you had us do like certain exercises on the way up, and then um, like the prompts for the journal and stuff was like bombs went off with how my heart just like I wrote a poem, guys. I haven't wrote a poem in like months, and it was beautiful. you know yeah I'm sure. Thank you. Yes, there you go. Um, <laughs> and I was able to do like some yeah. like releasing and healing yeah. um, that I didn't expect, you know. Yeah. But um, You're so a very good writer. Thank you. I also want to say that I have taken a big step in um, getting out of the stuckness of okay, I've been like writing my biography like fifteen years, and like it's in this you know, whatever, it's on my flash drive, you know, kind of thing. And like wanting to like, what's my next step? Like, how do I make it even me, like seem realistic to me? And so um, Denise gave me an idea, I don't know, about a month or so ago, and we had like a little 30 minute talk and I was like, okay, that's a step. And so I got it done and I found a title for my book, which I've been struggling for literally years for a title. Um, and I just, um, I feel excited again. 
that I can actually like get it accomplished and um like I love just writing I don't know I and I remember when you first started and we were talking about dreaming you yeah. messaged me and said Rachel I can't like that's not safe yes yes yes, and yes. now look at you you're excited Yes. Okay. There's, there's a 92 day U-turn. Like, why do you do this program? Like, <laughs> yes. I remember that very specifically, yes. like my trauma brain going, no, I don't dream. I don't make plans. I don't make goals. No, we stay safe every day. That is how I live my life. And like, um, yeah. Okay. This life is a heck of a lot more fun. <laughs> uh, a lot, a lot more, uh, entertaining and just, sparkly like I really like giggled at that word but um she thought I was a cheerleader yeah I was just I gonna was say only a cheerleader in seventh grade I call her cheerleader <laughs> um but I get it and sparkly is definitely a cheerleader word and now I'm just like oh I'm, I'm using it like oh please am I gonna become a cheerleader <laughs> um but I love you uh so I that, take no offense no um yeah one thing that I noticed when you, my eye is being weird, so you know, <laughs> I don't you? know what's happening, but um, I think it's <laughs> <we're> like getting <laughs> so close. Oh, so right. Right. Yeah. I will <laughs> um, One thing that I noticed is when, when you're living in fight or flight mode, most things become a crisis. Anything that's out of kind of the lane can become a crisis. Sure. And what I have noticed over the past 90 days is still life happens. If there's upsets, there's shifts. There's unexpected things, but you are moving through them at a faster pace. Mm. You're not, they're not allowing them to paralyze you anymore. Yeah. Ruminating is long. Yeah. I recognize too, you used to message me and be like, here's the crisis. Now you message me and say, here's the crisis and here's how I'm working on getting yeah. through it. It's like, yeah, yeah, girl, that's it. Yeah. You got the tools and you're using it and we're right here to support you. Yeah. But you know what to do now. And it's pretty cool. Yes, I know what to do now. I mean, case in point, we're a little late starting this podcast because I I had a situation and I went outside and I said to myself, self, you can take care of this in two ways. One, you can use a coping skill that is not appropriate. Or two, you can text someone and get Miss Rachel out there and, and tell her what's up. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know. Do something. Use my voice. Yes. Yeah. Using my voice is like a bit new to me. Yeah. Um. Even though, like, outside of the podcast world, I can be quite, you know, funny and talkative and, and everything. But using my voice when it um means something. When it means something. When it when it's like standing up for me. Yeah. Um. That's a little new, but it feels good. Yeah. Good work. I'm proud of you. We are proud of you. Thank you. So what would you say to somebody who is contemplating or on the fence? Uh, maybe they've experienced, you know, course trauma in their past. Yeah. They've got PTSD. They've been living in fight or flight mode in that trauma brain, but they don't want to stay there. But the question often is, is there hope that I can get out of it because we've lived in this space for so long? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. When, um, when Hannah, you know, suggested this program and I looked a bit into it, you can't get a lot of, you know, like knowledge about it yet until you really, you know, decide to dig and start asking those questions of you two. Um, I kind of was like, mm, okay, no, I've, I've been in the therapy groups. I've been in the CBT and the DBTs and every therapy you can imagine. And, um, I was like, I don't want more work, you know, like, no. Um, but all I can say is take that leap, take that step. Like Melissa was saying, do it afraid, do it unsure, do it, you know, for, for your kids, for whatever you need to do it for at that particular moment. Um, because you're worth it and you're worth the change and you're worth the finding your sparkle. Like if you feel like you're dead and you know, like inside and you don't dream and you don't have hope, you don't have goals and you just live in to live. This program teaches you how to live alive. How to just, boom. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just be, be, yeah. It teaches you so much and it is so worth it. And, um, reach out ask the questions and know that we are real people that have gone through this program um 
and and we all had worry and we're all coming out on the other end so much more grateful and so much more alive I, I people often say well, what can i really do in three months oh gosh and like actually um, <laughs> actually you can uh, make a big step in your book and you can give it a name and you can you know um change relationships and and find your sparkle and your joy yeah. and Oh my gosh, you can do so much in three months and shed so many layers, so many tears. And gain friends. And gain That's wonderful right. friends. That's right. That, uh, I don't know, I, I like how you call us Eagle One, I think, because we're like the first like survivor mm -hmm. cohort. Yeah. Like, that's our name. Like we're gonna do like some kind of group text called Eagle One or something. <laughs> yeah. And just that's gonna be our thing, you know? Um, so next t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gaining friends from all over the country yeah. has been so cool. And um, I you know started that, blogging again. Oh yeah, I started blogging again. Um, and I just, I just doing stuff, even yes. though I'm uncomfortable or don't really understand or whatever. I'm just putting it out there in the universe, and like the universe is going, "Hey, cool, you're awake, you're alive again. Let's go, baby." Yeah. You know. And then these tools that I'm learning from, you know, the things that Denise makes you do. <laughs> and I'm loving that. <laughs> um, like, wow, this stuff literally works. It just does. And, and these two and the women all over this beautiful house, they have your back. Yeah. They have your back at 2 a.m. if you need it. Hopefully not. Uh, but, you know, they... They might not get the message from mine. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got your back. And um, there's no question that you can't ask. Yep. No tears that you can't shed. Yep. And they want to hear the joys and the victories. And they're there for it all. And um, that is an amazing blessing. And everybody deserves that. Amen. Well, thank you for reaching out. Even though you didn't know us from Adam. <sighs> Even though you've done all the therapies, mm -hmm. even though you've done the things, you've been there, um, this truly isn't a trauma group. This is a what's next group, a life yes. after trauma. Yes, and, life after trauma. Yes, and, um, amazing. This is just the beginning. So what I love is having someone like Sarah participate, um, gain her spark back, yeah. and then, and then it ripple effects, like, and it impacts others because your blog your book, mm -hmm. your voice yes. will continue to impact other people and in your, your community. Kids. Yeah, my kids. Yes. I've got a couple of those too. Yeah, and I bet they see the change. Yeah, actually. And it's strange when my 18-year-old is beginning to go, hmm, who's my mother? <laughs> <laughs> so that's been kind of fun that to see. Awesome. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. Like, yeah, the ripple effects of generations that are yeah. what we're raising, you know. So uh, I did not ask her the title of her book because I want to find out tomorrow. Oh, yes. Tomorrow. During our dream dinner, <laughs> we pretend like it's five years from now. Yes. And we are going to come back down the stairs wearing our, you know, yes. get up and our props and whatever. And we're just going to say things like, oh, my gosh, I haven't seen See you in five, five years. <laughs> what, what, how old are your kids? What's life like? And she'll be able to tell us all about how her book went number one on Amazon. Oh, yeah, you know, New York Times bestseller. That's all right. right. <laughs> all that stuff. And like, even, even this dream dinner is like huge for me. Um, coming from an Eames sort of background. Um, group dinners, not my thing. Um, and just doing, doing something around a dinner that's fun and like celeb celebratory. Is like wow, it's kind of mind bending for me. And um, I remember messaging Rachel and just being like freaked out about this day of shopping mm -hmm. tomorrow. Like, girl, no, I don't look in the mirrors. I don't go shopping. I don't put clothes on that look good. Like, I don't, I mm -mm, can't do this. No, 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 no. Y'all, I took myself shopping last week, hey. and I just asked God, help me see what you see in the mirror. That's beautiful. And I literally just grabbed clothes, threw them in my cart. I didn't analyze it all. I didn't look at everything in my body. I just went in there and I tried clothes on if they fit and, you know, didn't look, you know, whatever. They were long enough and all of those things. I bought them. And I did not look at my body and, and agonize over it. 
I just did it. How freeing is that? And like, I have an outfit tomorrow and for tomorrow. It's not like some glamorous thing, but it's something that three months ago, I would have just walked right by. And um, so there you go. There's another mm-hmm. awesome testimony right. of this. Mic drop. So mm-hmm. you like might Rachel says, boom. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we have one more testimony for you to hear. Ooh, ooh, Thank ooh. you so much, Sarah, for saying yes, for being here. We would, it would have been. Eagle One would not be saying no. No, it'd be quieter. <laughs> I have to look at I the camera, camera there. Right there. Or, but we'll be talking too, so it's okay if you look at us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we magically have a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of editing it could just be like <laughs> new person. Um, we have our friend Christy here who participated in 90 Day U-Turn was, of course, here at the retreat. Um, she's been a joy to get to know over these last three months, and I'm excited about the changes she's making. So I'd love to hear from you about why you originally said yes. So I was in, um, invited to 90 Day three months ago, and um, the person who invited me said it changed her life, and um, I was going through um, a lot of dark places and so I said yes and here I am and I'm so happy that I said yes and it's been spectacular and what would you say your favorite parts have been um meeting wonderful Christian people and all these women have been so amazing and I I feel that just each week we've met um, and the lessons that we have gone through, I have gained so much strength and bravery. Um, I've been more confident in myself and um, less fearful. I feel um, I've been I've gotten closer to God, and um, I just feel those things are so important. Um, there are a lot of things that I still have to work on. Um, you know, um, I've, I've, as far as healthy things in my life. Um, Going back to um, the 90-day program, um, things that I learned, um, I've gotten rid of a lot of toxic stress. Um, I've gotten away from toxic people. Um, And I think that was stuck for me that I didn't know how to get out of. And so, I think it's really important for people, um, if you're enduring that in your life, that you need to get out because um, it's 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 very unhealthy, and it's okay to not to be around those people. Mm-hmm. It's not it's okay to be friends with them, but it's just not okay to be around them. And I think often when we're feeling stuck, it feels like the choices are taken away from us. And we feel like this is just the way it is. This is just the way I am. There's nothing I can do. It's going to be like this forever. When in reality, there are a plethora of choices all of the time. And Mm -hmm. so some of the workshops or worksheets Mm -hmm. that we did really highlighted the options. And when you can see more options, then you can make a calculated choice. And when you see, oh, this relationship isn't serving me and I can put up a boundary. I do not have to participate in X, Y, and Z. I'm not, you know, you then get some of your power back. Right. And I also, I've had a set boundary with uh, my loved ones and, um, take time, quiet time for myself. And I'm, I'm learning that. I'm trying to learn that because I'm learning self-care. Mm-hmm. So, and that's really important. It's really important to 
take care of yourself because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of your family. Mm -hmm. So what would you say life is like now just after those 90 days? Um, I, I feel more free. I feel like I can, I can breathe again. Um, three months ago, I literally felt like I couldn't breathe. And um, I felt suffocated. And now I feel I can literally just breathe. Like fresh air is just surrounding me. What was, so what's really cool is that with this specific cohort, we do the 90 days and then the goal is to have a retreat at the end or we can meet in person. Yeah. So what is the difference between meeting every day through a screen and then actually being able to give real life hugs? Um, when I met the girls, uh, so we met halfway because we had to pick up a couple girls at the airport and it was just my heart just, it was just overwhelming to meet the girls. And then when we all got in the van, you know, we just were popping jokes and laughing. And we stopped at a camp RV. I, I always have to go to the bathroom. And I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And we popped off at a camp RV. <laughs> it was so funny. And, um, but we just connected because we were already connected mm -hmm. and um, we're just continuing to connect. And um, we've been texting the past few weeks, you know, arranging and meet times mm -hmm. and meeting places. And it's just like we've known each other for a long time. And, um, you know, as you, as you all know that, you know, as you communicate over the phone or through Zoom, you are already connecting before mm -hmm. you even meet. Mm -hmm. So then when you meet, it's like a whole other world. And another thing, we all come from the same space. Mm -hmm. We've all been traumatized. So we get each other. And so we, we don't judge each other. We all been traumatized differently, but um, we support each other and we love each other for who we are. We don't, you know, yeah, you know, we accept each other. When Rachel and I were first brainstorming this, <laughs> we were like, oh my gosh, we should do a survivor retreat. Like, I know the power of these experiences. And like, it would be so stinking cool to do some of this stuff. And then I, we thought nobody, nobody would come. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to start with 90 day U-turn and really create that cohesiveness and, uh, you know, create that trust, not just with us, but with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get here, we already have that like know and trust factor. We already get each other. We already know. Um, because each week they get partnered with somebody else. So they know bits and pieces of everybody's story. And of course, we don't know everything, but we know enough over the 12 weeks to feel like um, like we get each other. And I think that just makes the retreat kind of an exclamation point for sure on the experience. And that's another thing. I am gaining more trust, especially with these women. And I know that, um, and they're from all over the country, and I know they're not going to share my story with the neighbor, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I used to not ever be able to dream. I did as a child, but um, in one of our weekly Zooms, um, one of our lessons was on dreaming. I, I couldn't do it because I couldn't dream. I didn't know my goals, but now I do. Um, I was talking to my granny last week. Um, I'm not going to go into detail what a granny is right now, but um, I have a granny. Uh, and, uh, We've talked about it. Okay. Yeah. You know, we have a granny. Uh, I love my granny. I love you, granny. Um, I wish you were here. Um, but, um, <laughs> but I told her what I wanted to do, and she was like, wow. So my dream is to write a book, which I am working on. And um, I want to, I 
I give to the homeless, not money, but when I see someone on the, on the end of the road, you know, I'm like, are you hungry? Um, if you're hungry, I'll turn around and unless I'm on the, on a, on a route or something, I'll go to through McDonald's and grab them food. I don't even ask them what they want. I just, and unless they're allergic to something, I just get, uh, grab them back. But my dream is to, I want it to have a homeless shelter for abused mm -hmm. um, women. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is a dream of mine. Um, um, so I, I know God is leading me there. Um, in um, Philip, uh, Philippians 4.13, God tells us that we can do all this through him who gives us strength. And he's doing that. He is. I'm praying. I get up at 4 a.m. every morning. I set my alarm. I haven't done it this weekend. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah, but um, I have been studying my Bible and writing verses down. And um, But I know God's working with my, my trauma in my life. I think God a lot of times puts us in bad situations and it turns into good things. I really do believe that. Um, unfortunately, bad things happen to me. I don't, I don't like it. I was bitter and angry for a very, very, very long time, very, very long time, many, many years. Um, my abuse started at the age of one um, up until the age of 19. Then I was victimized again through my years of life. Uh, Joshua 1 9 says, Be strong, courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I truly believe that. He's with me every day, every minute, every second of the day. I advise everyone in this world who sees this podcast to join 90 Day because I truly believe it will change your life because it has changed mine. I love that. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for saying yes and for being a part of it. And it's not always easy work, right? The questions that it we takes ask. Work. It takes work. Takes you, have, you, you, yes. you have to be self-disciplined. If you're not self-disciplined, I don't recommend it. Um, I believe they're talking about doing another 90 day and I'm highly looking, considering doing it again. Mm -hmm. Tell them what words we will no longer allow you to say. I say I'm sorry a lot. And, <laughs> and the reason I say I'm sorry is due to my trauma. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm either going to pause or pardon me. Yes. <laughs> one so it's it, 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 yeah so I have, I have yeah and a couple a few other girls say it too oh, yeah. but it's it's when you've been traumatized you say I'm sorry and to I any little thing. to any little thing I mean I'll be like oh sorry or you know just over silly little things so so I'm learning this weekend to pause or pardon me <laughs> So, but thank you for allowing me to be on this podcast tonight. Um, I'm enjoying every minute of this weekend. Um, I'm going to be sad to leave. Um, so, but miracles happen here. They do. They do. And I love Denise. I love Rachel. And I wouldn't be here without Rachel. I would not be here. <laughs> and um, it was a total God thing for me to be here. And if it wasn't for Rachel, um, she has saved my life. Mm -hmm. And these two, they're actually saving my life. Um, I am have some things to get ready when I get back home. So anyway, <laughs> so happy thought. <laughs> we have a lot going on tonight. We're, We're getting ready. Good. Bad. Yeah, okay. so we're, we're getting real. ready to go to a bonfire. <laughs> yes, so, so. We, you are invited. Just know that if you are listening to this and you're going, that's me, 
That's me. That's me. I think I want to be a part if of If I it. can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> then Seriously. reach out to us. The email stops us at protonmail.com. We want to know um, or hear from you, whether it's this immediate cohort or the next one. Our goal is to do two to three rounds of this a year. And it really just depends on who's interested. Mm -hmm. Because we have the heart and the desire and believe that everyone and their brother should do it. Yeah. Um, and it's truly just those who are willing to say, I want to be a part. And what Stop Sis does is we ask the survivor to pay what they can. And then we work to fundraise the rest. Uh, so get get in touch with us. Any sort of like excuse you may be saying, I don't have time or money or resources, we will help. Mm -hmm. So we will help you make a way if you have that desire. Um, so thanks for listening, you guys. We may have a few more testimonies to pop in here. But for now, it's bonfire time. Thank you so much for listening to this powerful episode of Stop Suffering in Silence. If you are interested in booking Rachel to speak at your school, your church, or on your podcast, then please email openblindeyes at protonmail.com. If you are interested in sponsoring a survivor on their healing journey and would like to donate to Stop Sis, then please check out the link in the description box or show notes below, or you can email stopsis at protonmail.com. And finally, if you are currently suffering in silence or you know somebody who is, whether they're dealing with a current trauma or one from the past, then we will always recommend that you reach out to your local resources and find a counselor that you can trust because nobody is meant to suffer alone. Have an amazing week and thank you for being here.